But we're not done with Trump talk yet, folks, <laughs> because it's interesting to watch. So with Buster with the Boys had Trump on. We talked a little bit about it on Who Are These Socials? And Will Compton uh, got some flack for interviewing Trump. The Washington Post wanted him to answer for why he laughed at a Trump joke and all this stuff. And Will Compton responded to it by farting into his camera. <laughs> it's very funny. Which I found very funny and very appropriate. And I said on Who Are These Socials, I was like, to me, that kind of marks the end of this horseshit. I'm like, maybe we're coming, we're officially out of it where, like, the comedians and the podcasters and the people just fucking around are winning again. You just saw it with Shane, where he's turning down SNL. He doesn't, we don't need that horseshit anymore. But the people that are able to still get their last jabs in. The fight is not over. People have not surrendered yet in the, uh, whatever you want to call it, the cancel culture war, if you will. Because you still get stories like this. Remember, uh, Kirk dealt with this a couple months ago with the Portland venue yeah. canceling on him. Yeah. I had never heard of that. Maybe it's more common than we realize because Andrew Schultz uh, dealt with this. So Andrew Schultz had Trump on flagrant this week. Um, it seemed like a fine enough interview. I didn't hear a lot of controversy from it, honestly. No. The only The only controversy I heard was like, Schultz laughed at Trump, I guess. <laughs> so it's the, kind of the same thing that Will Compton got, where it's like, you, you, you didn't, you had a chance and you didn't cut his head off. Jim Gaffigan laughed at Trump this weekend, right? Or so Thursday, whatever it was. Yeah, so I, I don't, I don't really know like what the backlash was or anything, but uh, at least one venue had a problem with it. So this is Andrew Schultz telling us about response he got. So Schultz was supposed to film his special coming up. And it had been the works as he's about to explain, and then this happened. So it was an awesome interview, and everybody loved it. And then a day later, Dove was like, oh, by the way, uh, the venue you're going to shoot your special in canceled your shows. No, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <Don't>. it. <laughs> Within three hours. <laughs> Look, after we interviewed him, before the episode comes out, he goes to the venue. Everybody leaves. It's on Schultz's like special team. All of them had to go to the venue, check it out. So I assume everything is good. People flew in for this. Oh, yeah. Like, so this we've had these venues yeah. locked in for months now, month, something like that. Like, uh, it's not like we might do it here. It's booked. It's ready to go. We're going on sale this week. Like, yeah. we have the wow. entire production team come out for the – this is for the third time many of us are, 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 are you know, spotting the venue and looking at everything. We have the set design already curated we're moving around seating plots camera plot. like it's it's ready to go we're going on sale this week and we get an email three and a half hours out after discussing with our board members we don't think that it would be there's email you'll, you'll bring it up but don't show any emails off but it was a bam brooklyn academy of music which is a venue they've shot tons of specials in and three and a half hours after the interview they canceled shows so mm. It's not even enough time, even if you watched the interview the minute it came out, it's not enough time to even like really think about, should we have this guy here? No kidding. So they were like, I guess they were waiting for an excuse to cancel Andrew or something. But it is, it's like for venues to do that, I think is the craziest of all. They did it because to Louis. They, Lou, uh, here's where I'll try and muster the defense of them on Louis. At least the argument with Louis is that he was a sexual predator. I don't agree with that by any means. But, like, that's the argument, I guess. Andrew Schultz had a presidential candidate on his show. True. I don't get what is even the argument to cancel his gigs. It's fucking crazy. You're, I mean, you're right. They have done it with Louis. But this is where it's, like, just buildings now. The board of some building is going to weigh in on who can perform there and who can't because then you have to scrutinize everything are you going through every comic that plays there and saying like have they ever expressed views we don't agree with no of course it's just that you don't want trump to have a platform so you're taking this away from andrew schultz now luckily schultz is at a point where he'll just find another venue it's not a big deal right if this was a smaller comic that could be ruining their career in a lot of ways you know, oh, yeah. if if they have if the only places that will book them stop booking them, that's a whole different argument. Again, luckily Schultz is a he can play Madison Square Garden if he wanted to, so it's not that big a deal for him. Ultimately, he's able to laugh about it. But I do think it's crazy, 
and it's we're starting to break people of this habit. But as as you can see by the response to Will Compton and Andrew Schultz, there's still some of that in there. So I wonder, like, if Trump wins in two weeks, are we going to get a cooler world than we lived in eight years ago? Or are people going to revert back to psychos? There's some evidence that say the psychos might win out, which is displayed in this email that Schultz reads here. Yeah. First is. off, I want to thank you for thinking of BAM for Andrew Schultz's upcoming comedy show. We are always excited when promoters consider our space for their events. No After some internal discussions with leadership, it was decided that BAM is not the right fit for this show at this time. That said, we really do appreciate you reaching out. We'd love to work with you in the future and uh, the, uh, for future events that might be a better match for BAM. He, he explains or, that. What yeah. that is there is, is BAM, Brickle Art Museum or whatever it's called. Um, it's them begging Live Nation. So I guess Live Nation is booking Schultz. Yep. Which is a massive company. So they're saying, but please, Live Nation, for all the liberal acts you have, don't stop working with us. <laughs> That's what's crazy about these groveling weasels is like, oh, well, no, please, we still want that. We just want to pretend we're morally upright with Andrew Schultz. It's like, well, then you should disown the company that's working with Andrew, right? If you have these high morals, you know, like that's where people get fucked up. It's it never Mike, that makes too much sense. They're, they're, right. Exactly. There's no logical step. It's like, well, if you disagree with something Andrew Schultz did, you should disassociate with it. You shouldn't say, but, but please, when you're booking fucking Olivia Rodrigo or whoever, remember us because <laughs> <laughs> we want the alcohol sales, you know, like that's that's what's really crazy and gross about it is. They take stands where they knew that would get some sort of publicity, but probably not kill their relationship with Live Nation. Uh, it's really gross, in my opinion, that it still exists. But you do get some. I don't know. We haven't we haven't rid ourselves of this plague of people thinking they can dictate how you think by taking jobs away from you. <laughs> I I can't believe it's still happening, especially for that. It's just annoying, <laughs> especially for someone like Schultz, who it's like. You knew who he was when you booked him. Nothing's changed since the Trump interview. Sh Schultz has made, literally, th there was nothing outrageous in that interview. Schultz has made uh, trans jokes. He's used uh, racy material before. He's always been this guy, and not only has he always been this guy, he's never lied about that. He has not tried to get opportunities and apologized for who he was. There's been no horseshit with Andrew Schultz. Say what you want about him. I know a lot of people think uh, he laughs too much and uh, shit like that, but he's always been upfront about who he is. So you can't use that excuse. And then just because he interviewed Donald Trump, like, what should he have done in that interview? Are you just saying that shows aren't allowed to have a presidential candidate on? You know? I think are you, are you, would you cancel Alex Cooper? No, no. You, you, have, to have, to, you have to have the right candidate on. <laughs> that's, that's what's really psychotic about it. And it's unfortunate because uh, the most backlash that uh, BAM will ever get, the venue, is people talking about it on podcasts like this. You know, like that's all they'll ever receive because they're in control of that, I guess. What I've always advocated for is like now people who like Andrew Schultz and support him should say like, well, I'm not going to perform at that venue if that's how they are. If they don't want a guy like Schultz, then I won't work there. But then my mind gets into a pretzel because I'm like, is that cancel culture? So I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to navigate, but it is. It's wrong that they're still trying to do that type of shit but luckily it's fewer and further between as i think uh this show is a good barometer of that we barely talk about stuff like this anymore so jacksonville's winning 20 to 10 okay you can stop updating me then okay <laughs> <laughs> it's all over <laughs> it's over <laughs> all right go to blindmike.net for everything blind mike look at me i did it Kragers did it. 